Okay, we have a strategy, and the strategy contains uh, several statements and also several subjects. But if we have to to uh, concentrate it, uh, we have something that uh, we uh, want to do. I, I heard some of you mention it before, and uh, the big challenge is to uh, find out what is the content of these statements, and that that takes uh, some of you also have stated some time uh, of cooperation to to work into. I'll give you an example where it has succeeded uh, in a while. We want to give our citizens the responsibility and competences to use assisted living technologies in their everyday life. We want to create actually freedom for them who doesn't have it in the way they are living today. We want to create empowered and enriched working environments for our citizens, our employees, by using the assisted living technologies. We want to create a framework where innovation and creates uh, another economically context where less money can create uh, more satisfying services for more citizens. We also want to increase the numbers of private jobs within healthcare technology because that will produce more solutions uh, for the future. And uh, as I also heard some of you say before, our budgets are not growing, they are decreasing, and uh, our, the expectations for the services that we are to deliver is increasing very rapidly. Uh, people want more, and that's why we have to use technology uh, to create other solutions, maybe not more of the solutions that we have today. Meaningfulness. I, I want you to, to bear that word in mind. Meaningfulness is the key. Meaningfulness, not, not only in a business uh, case way, but for the citizens. This product that you produce why should uh, the old Miss Jensen want that? Why? You have to answer that question. Why should uh, the care workers want to work with your system or your product? Why? The citizens, me. Why should I want to buy it? And also, as uh, Joshua, you said before, the business that created uh, uh, on the background of your product, how big is it? What's your ambition? And who will profit from it? This is headlines, but the, the contents, uh, you, you have to answer that when you're going into producing uh, products that you want to sell to the municipalities. When we do not address the value, we have tried that. Uh, in 2008, the government created a great fund. It was called, uh, directly <coughs> translated to English, Labor Saving Technology. Do you think that Ms. Jensen won Labor Saving Technology? I don't think so, because labor saving them, they are not coming to attend me, the employees, no. Um, the labor unions, they were very, very active to create another name for, 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 for this uh, foundation. They got another name, but the contents of the foundation was the same. <laughs> <laughs> the municipality, yes, labor savings uh, uh, is uh, good because it's uh, less costs. Business, maybe, maybe not because uh, these two are not uh, fulfilled. When you're looking into your product, I also think that you should say meaningfulness. How could you place meaningfulness uh, in a framework? I would suggest you try this framework. Uh, if you address your uh, product into this uh, framework, you also can uh, communicate about where are you. If you are looking on the lower ones, uh, it's Maslow's uh, pyramid of needs, human needs, you have the psychological, physical needs. It's the need to, to get something to eat, to moving around, to uh, ordinary daily activity, for instance, in the bathroom. If uh, somebody is not able to do that, uh, they would not move above. Uh, and if you can create a solution that they give them back the opportunity uh, to be self-reliant, uh, this way they'll go to the next one and the next one. Safety and security. I'll come back to that because I think that is, uh, that, that is um, an area where we need solutions and we need to think different than we do today. I'll give you a short example and if I don't, remind me. Uh, love and belongings, I think uh, maybe, maybe Facebook or Facebook for seniors could have a place here. Uh, something uh, secure, something uh, that could connect you to your beloved ones. Self-actualization. We have seen products uh, that addressing this need. We have seen um, touch and play. 
It's a product that is an activity, center for activity. You can communicate through the product. And you can also be, be entertained by the product. You can learn by the product. Um, it, it goes into to that area. So if you want to communicate about your product, I'll ask you, where are you? Which, which needs are you going to fulfill? Meet Fleming. Fleming is the guy. He knows that we are telling his story. And he agrees that that is OK. He just said that if you want to tell anything about me, you have to tell that I am a passionate uh, fire truck model collector. <laughs> <laughs> you have to show a picture of me and my fire trucks in this, in this apartment. We met him uh, when uh, uh, he, he was not more able to use a push button. He is um, uh, suffering from muscular dystrophy. And um, before we started in his apartment, uh, we made a COPM. Do you know what that is? Canadian Occupational Performance Measure. It's a tool, framework tool used by occupational therapists to measure the ability to carry out an activity that you want. And uh, you can measure that on a scale from 1 to 10 uh, for activities that you have created, uh, you have to express yourself. And the sixth uh, core activities uh, Fleming was uh, writing down and uh, he scored himself and he lay between one and two. I mean, also when you cannot even move your finger to use the push button. So uh, we installed in his apartment a voice control environment so that he could control his windows, his door, his refrigerator, his lights, his television, his uh, elevator. Uh, so that he was able uh, independently to, to take his wheelchair and run it out in the street. After that, we scored him again on the COPM, and he, he, he scored himself uh, between 8 and 9. So uh, he raised his activity level with 7. I had hoped that uh, then we could see uh, which uh, kind of services we could uh, save money, not giving planning because he got the technology. But instead of he just proved which quality of life he was denied by the services he couldn't get because uh, there was no savings, he just got the better life. But uh, the, the, the framework in thinking is an illustration of how we are creating projects. We are looking into and we are trying to find measures that tell us something about uh, the quality of life that uh, is experienced by the citizens, by the users. And we're also looking into the um, working environment. I've not expressed anything about that in this example. I'll give you another example afterwards. And then we, of course, are calculating is it worthable for the municipality. This is a development of framework methods. It's uh, also a product where we are trying to illustrate how we can make a pathway to uh, implement technologies. So can and, I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, let me... Can, can you actually afford to help him improve his life quality? Or do you have to, if like one of the teams here find a solution that will improve quality of life, but won't save any money, or it actually be an expense, is it, is it an option at all for the, for the municipality to invest in it? It depends. This is a product uh, where we have seeked uh, funding uh, to uh, make it real, this, so to do, just do it. Yeah. And it will uh, run out, and afterwards, uh, of course, uh, if you have offered to Fleming, Fleming this uh, major rise of quality in his, his life, you cannot take it away again. But, but uh, I do not know how we are going to, to, to uh, end it. Uh, he, he'll, he, Fleming will uh, have it for a lifetime. Um, and also, we know that uh, I think that it's possible to, to, to find a way where and find uh, situations where it's also profitable. Yeah. Thank you. Another example, in 2010, we had our first uh, breakthrough, um, and that was um, using the mindset, if you're going to save money, maybe you should start investing money. So uh, we was uh, facing a major budget cutback, um, and uh, we had some experiences through this project transfer, product from uh, this ABT fund, or Labor Saving Foundation. So. so um, we actually uh, went out and said, okay, in every nursing home apartment, we will install a ceiling hoist, and at the same time, we'll find out if it's possible to create, to, to change the work uh, methods so that they are not anymore two persons transferring a person from, for instance, bed to wheelchair, 
but there's only one that's possible to do safe and okay uh, using a ceiling height. And we we, do, we, we did it actually. Um, the other people, they thought, this is nice, we get a better transfer. Now there's not uh, two persons talking about how they're going to transfer me from set bed to wheelchair. Now there's one person talking to me, how are we doing this together? Uh, the staff is more present. Uh, we have experienced there's less waiting. We have seen a higher degree of responsibility from the staff and also from the citizens there in this working together. The staff experienced less waiting for colleagues, less attrition, better transfer, and also a less uh, degree of pain pack. Back pain. Back, Back pain. <laughs> <laughs> Your weight, okay. <laughs> so, so, and uh, the staff expressed uh, that they were very happy because they got this education uh, in, the, in transferring situations, so that was uh, good for them. We found out the a year later that uh, the degree of uh, one person transfer has decreased from 63 percent to I do not remember it was 32 or 37 and uh, when we get the next one I can explain you why this is um, the economy in an overall perspective uh, behind the project and uh, here is education it's in Danish I'm sorry it didn't it's not translated we had uh, 200 thousand Danish crowns allocated for education and that was far too little. The next year we used 400,000 more because uh, this amount of money was invested in installing uh, the ceiling hoists 16 million 450 thousand crowns and that, that was uh, too big. Uh, we had installed in, in as I said uh, I think it was 2,200 uh, nursing home apartments but some of them had it before we started because it was a uh, obvious good solution. So we took some of these money and have used that for more education. Remember, <coughs> technology that's not used, technology that's not used in the situation it was thought as, is just uh, some waste standing in our way. So, so, so we have to be sure the technology is used as it's meant to. But this is uh, there's something about uh, salary, something about uh, expenses uh, for, for service, their education, and then we have uh, the reduction in the budget. And we have uh, the first year, we only took half of it because we had to start up the product uh, using the ceiling hoist. And the next year, we got these savings uh, 3 million and 80,000 crowns every year. Later on, we uh, also installed these ceiling hoists in the uh, home care division so that in people's own homes, we're using ceiling hoists and also save money. Uh, on the, the, the working hours uh, doing that. So this is an example where we are addressing citizens' needs, more gentle transfer, staff's needs, better education, and also a better situation about the round transfer, a better tool, and also the economy. When we are looking into our uh, running operations, we want to use automation where it's possible and profitable. Uh, right now we have just started and uh, it's a public-private uh, um, project, uh, innovation project, uh, where we want to, to be, we have, yeah, OPI, uh, we want to um, see, we have an institution, this institution contains uh, 17,800 uh, floor square meters. These uh, 17,800 floor square meters, uh, 1,700 of them, are the, the, the floors are cleaned, they're washed by a person pulling a machine. Um, she wants this one instead of. And we, we just started, uh, it, 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 it has, hasn't run its first uh, turn now, but, but we want to find out if it's possible to get uh, the percentage of four square meters cleaned by a robot increased from 1,700 to more. And um, if it, that is possible, and also if we can create a positive business case around using this machine, we will uh, implement it in all our institutions in the years to come. <coughs> we will know that uh, about uh, 30 of April this year, approximately. We also started up a product where we have a uh, 
we, we, with a transport robot that's able to use an elevator. We will uh, see if it's possible to, to uh, push the laundry cart from uh, the department and to the... What? No, it's actually a sample. No, to, to, yeah. to, 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 the, to the, the place where the, 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 the laundry is washed. And also, then it could go to the kitchen and take uh, the food to the department. This uh, project will start uh, in, um, in um, this spring. This is just examples, and I, I'm, not, I'm not taking everything up. Yes, we thought about uh, uh, rehabilitation mm -hmm. and the tools, uh, technology used in, uh, within rehabilitation. We, we have more examples within rehabilitation. We have a lot more examples also within digitalization. If I can just comment on, on why I started laughing, because it's just such an obvious thing that really we talk about we need to keep the warm hands in the in the public sector, in the caretaking. So why do we have to have people pushing around trolleys and scrubbing floors? So when you start thinking in the way that you're presenting, there's a lot of solutions that I'm thinking, oh, wow, thinking that way, I could see actually a completely different set of needs uh, just because by changing your frame of mind to... All cold hands should actually be uh, taken over by technology. So, very inspiring example. Thank you. Sometimes it's a, it's a kind of core competence to be lazy. <laughs> if, if there's a, a job type of job that you do not like, it, it does not smell good, you get <laughs> back pain. Don't do it. Just serve it for a robot and make sure the robot can do it. And I think that that's that's the way we have we have to think. And also, if, if it, the salary for the person that has to take this bad smelling, bad job, uh, boring job, is uh, higher than the, the price that a robot uh, should have for, to do it, then educate the person to do something more funny. That, that's the kind of thinking that we are trying to apply. If we um, succeed, I do not know. So some persons in the US are talking about that they are afraid that robots will take uh, our jobs. They even uh, say that um, lawyers, doctors, engineers will be replaced by uh, artificial intelligence in not very uh, many years from now. Uh, if so, we have to create another political uh, model for um, spreading out wealth <laughs> so that uh, maybe I should do some fishing or hunting. <laughs> and if I can afford it, that's, that, that would be okay for me. I think that's fine. So, but that's an, quite another story. <clears throat> what we would like to have served is um, safety in the environment for all for its people. What if uh, the persons that are 90 or 100 years old could be very sure that uh, they are safe, they are sound, they can do what they want, they can go where they want, um, and if they are suffering from disabilities, how come? How if uh, technology could help them to do that anyway? Um, we are looking into telemedicine communication and clinical planning <coughs> on screens. We are looking into a safety. A safety. I can't say it. <laughs> this <is> technology <laughs> that relies regarding uh, ordinary daily living activities in the bathroom. We're doing that because that is uh, very costly. A lot of the. Uh, the hours that have been used by care professionals are used to helping people in the bathroom, going to the toilet, washing themselves, going into the bath. So that is uh, that is uh, millions, uh, and I, it's billions of crowns we are using every year. The 15th of September 2009, I took out uh, the statistics for a service that we at that time provided. It was called uh, Morning Care Number Four. And that it was uh, containing only activities used in the bathroom. On this specific date, if I took the number uh, of services uh, and what we paid for it, and um, I said, uh, we're doing this every day in a year. It was 55 million Danish crowns on this specific date. And if I uh, assume that every municipality in Denmark are using the same amount of hours in the same setting, it was uh, that year 1.1 billion Danish crown. So that's just to illustrate uh, uh, my point. <coughs> I won't talk more about that. But uh, did, uh, if we should sum up our needs, how is Cecina safe at home? 
how can rehabilitation be intensified while the costs are in due, reduced? Is it possible to switch from care services to ADL rehabilitation of the senior using education? Can we educate our seniors to do something about their own situation? Can friendship and communication be integrated by using virtual technologies? Could use of smartphones and wearables create increased prevention of disease? How could it be possible to increase senior empowerment and responsibility regarding one's own health and documentation tasks? We talked to a Japanese professor. He was a doctor, medical doctor. He was from Kyoto. And uh, it was possible in a project he carried out to, to uh, let the citizens and their relatives take over 69% of the, the healthcare professional documentation. That, that is... Uh, <coughs> quite provoking in a Danish context, I should say. Telemedicine and uh, telehealth solutions, uh, how can value be, be created by using these uh, technologies? Right now, uh, nowhere it has been possible to uh, show a positive business <coughs> using uh, telemedicine or telehealth solutions. Uh, so so uh, we still have to, to see that come. Finding dementia, how it's possible to maintain life home as a person sick of dementia. And then this challenge, as I told you. <coughs> Normally, uh, it has been said that 20% uh, of the challenges lies within creating the technology, and 80% it's implementing, implementing the technology. My experience is that even though creating the technology is a major task, and I respect really the work done to create the technology. When you stand with a product, it can be smart, it can be good, it can be delicious. Remember, 90% is this implementation, the use of the technology, and also harvesting the value. No technology gives away its value voluntarily. You have to take the technology and force the value out of it every time. And if you don't use it, and if persons around the technology doesn't use it. It's worthless. Hey, I mean, does that mean that if anybody here comes up with a solution and has as part of the solution that the implementation is extremely easy and intuitive, then it would be very attractive uh, to look at buying that solution? Could be. So I, I think that what we found at many of these start of Week in Health, that is that uh, a lot of people are concentrated on the product, uh, like the, the 10%. But actually, the, the problem for the customer, the municipality or, or the regions are, but we have to implement it. And we have to implement not only this solution, but a high number of solutions. For example, at hospitals, they say that we have like 10 systems we have to log in and out of. And just simply logging in and out of the system, they might be simple on their own. But just simply the activity of logging in and out actually takes up to an hour a day because they have to do it 10 times an hour, waiting times and downtimes on the computer. So this is a huge, huge issue. Uh, and it's very, very good to, to get it up that it's part of the solution. Yeah. If you create a solution that makes people healthier longer time, and they'll buy it themselves, that would be actually a good thing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> be out of work. <laughs> I'm actually working every day with what I mean just presented. I'm teaching these people using the hoist. Um, and Besides the hoist, there's this piece of plastic called Spielerdu that make it, makes just, it's just a piece of plastic that makes it easier for the citizen to turn around in bed and it reduces back pain because we don't have to lift people. We can just pull them in the bed. And even though it's such, it's a piece of plastic, we are still having problems by getting people to use them because it's easier just to do this. Yeah, until you get your back pain. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a, yeah, the implementation is on such a low level, so you really have to think it through. Okay. So, time is running. This was very interesting. Thank you very much.